This is getting started with Google. We're going to look at how to create a Google account and some of the things that you can do with it. Starting a Google account starts out easy enough. All you have to do is go to google.com. As you can see, I'm already signed in because I've got my initial and C here, but if you're starting out, you can click on this Google Apps grid. And it's the very first one. Now, if I wasn't logged in, it would ask me here if I wanted to create one. So let's see if I sign out. So there's create an account right there. Now, the first thing to do, of course, is put in your name, and you do have to put in your real name, and then you choose a username, and that will be the beginning of your Gmail address. Choosing a username is a little bit tricky because this is a very popular service, and you have to choose a username that's completely unique. You can't have two people that have johnsmith at gmail.com because they would get each other's email. That would never work. Also, your email is like an identifier for you online, so yours has to be unique. That is how you do things like sign up for accounts elsewhere. So when you shoot, do your username, you'll probably have to put in some letters and some numbers. And you can also do things like a special character. You can put in a dot separate words. You can also put in an underscore and you do that by holding down the shift button while pressing the hyphen button. And then you put another word on the other side of that. So there are some different things that you can do. You can play with it and I suggest having a notepad and pencil by so that you can write down the different combinations you've tried. Um, you don't want to give this some thought before you sit down to do it, but it doesn't really matter how long it takes you to find one that you like. If I signed this up, then ers098 underscore word at gmail.com would be my new Gmail address. Now, if you already have an email address and you don't want the Gmail, you want the rest of Google, you can click on that and just do your, your already existing email address. Then after that, you have to do a password. It has to be eight or more characters, and you have to have a mix of letters and numbers and symbols. The reason why they do that is to make it difficult for someone else to guess your password or to hack it. The longer the password is, the harder it is, even for a machine to hack, it will just take longer. So if you are trying to use one email, or sorry, one password for every account, I would strongly advise you not to do that for your email. They say that you really shouldn't do that for any of your accounts, but definitely for this one, for an email address, you're going to want that to be a unique password and you're going to want it to be pretty difficult to guess. So don't put in your name or your pet's name. You'll want to do something a little bit harder. You can do something like type in a part of a song lyric or you can put in two words where it's mixed together. So you put the first letter of the first word, and the first letter of the second word, and just build it like that. So I've got first and I, uh, then first and word. You would have to make that eight characters. And you have to put in letters and numbers and symbols. A symbol can be something like an exclamation point or a dollar sign, and you make those by holding down the shift button again. It's a large button by the enter button. And you hold that down and you push down the number one for an exclamation point and the number four for a dollar sign. And if you look at your keyboard, all of the numbers have a second character on top. You make those second characters by holding down the shift button. And then there are some other keys that have a second character, usually punctuation, down there on your right hand side where your pinky can reach them. Remember to hold the shift button down and then hit the second button. So I'm not going to go through all the steps to create a Google account because I already have one. But if you want to do this, after you do this part, it will ask you some questions about say how old you are just to make sure you're an adult. 
and then you can say whether or not you want to put in if you're a man or a woman or if you don't even want to answer that and there are some other things like that this is the tricky part also it will want you to put in a cell phone number so that it can verify your identity by sending you a code on your cell phone so if you're doing this you're going to have your cell phone nearby if you don't have one uh, you can contact the library we have some places where you can get different email accounts without having to use your cell phone. Now, once you are, hold on a second, let me go back. Once you are signed in, there's a lot you can do. I'm going to sign into mine. Once you have that and you've got your letter up here and you click on this, you'll have access to all of these things. If you have a Android phone or tablet, you'll recognize some of these. The photos will have all of your pictures that you've taken on the Android device. The calendar will already be installed on your phone. If you keep going, all this stuff down here, you have access to all of this. Keep is a pretty nice app. You can take notes on it. In other classes, we're going to look at Sheets and Docs and Drive. So if you want to learn how to use some more of these, we'll have more classes coming up in the next few weeks. And we're going to put some of them on YouTube for you. Right now, we're going to look at Gmail. And it's going to take us to my work email. Um, there's nothing on there that's personal. This is what a Gmail looks like. You've got your primary inbox, your social inbox, and promotions. This is optional, but it's the default. Primary is everything that seems to be the most important. It will filter out social, so that is things that are mostly emails from a service like Twitter or Facebook that will go right in here. Promotions is usually something like a newsletter that you've signed up for or a marketing email from a company. It will filter those out for you and put them over here by themselves. The compose is how you write a new one. And if you are looking at this on a tablet or a phone, the compose will probably just look like a circle with a plus sign in it. So that's what you'll look for. Now when you click compose, you put in the person's email address, whatever you want for subject. Before you hit send, um, you can change the way it looks with the formatting options. And the paperclip is important. That's how you will attach files. Um, we saw how to share files in another class where you can share it, but you can also just attach things here. So if you have a picture that you're wanting to send to a friend and it's on your computer, you just click attach, you find the one that you want, click open, it puts it down here for you. And then when you send, they will have a copy of that that they can use. You can also put in emojis. You can put in pictures. Uh, this is confidential mode. And there's a signature if you want to set up to have a signature on there. Another cool thing that you can do is this little button, the little down arrow next to send. You can schedule it. So if you are, say, writing something at work and you're about to go on vacation and you don't want them to answer right now, you can schedule it to send close to when you're coming back from vacation so they won't get buried in your inbox. Then if I was ready, uh, it won't let you send, of course, without an address up here, but if I was ready, I'd hit send. Um, if I close this, it's going to save it to drafts over here on the left. I don't want a draft of this, so I'm going to go down here to the trash can and discard it. You also, over here under the inbox, you have starred mails. If there's anything that looks important to you, you can put a star by it. And then from time to time, I click on the star to see if there's anything I've forgotten. Snoozed is if someone sends you an email and you think that it looks like something I want to answer, but I'm really busy right now, you can snooze and you can choose how long you want it to put a, just a pause on that and they'll bring it back later. Sent is really useful. Sometimes I am waiting for an email and I think how long has it been since I sent that and I go into the sent folder I can see it's actually only been a couple of days and I need to wait a little bit longer. Sometimes I can see that's been 10 days I'm going to send them another email because I don't think they got that. 
with sent, you can see exactly who you sent it to and exactly what time it's sent. Occasionally I go there and I realize that I did not even send the email that I think I sent. And drafts, as I said, if you close an email before you send it, it will save it automatically to drafts. So that is really useful if, say, you uh, lose your Wi-Fi connection or if your power cuts out, you'll have your draft there. And these things are labels that I have set up. If you have something that you want to label, you can do that here. And we're going to have another class sometime on email organization you can watch for, where we will talk about all the different things you can do with labels. And there are some other really cool tricks you can do to keep your email sorted out. And then you search your email up here. So that's the basics. Um, I'm not going to get into settings, but that's over here. You can change the look of your email screen and do quite a lot of other things. You can go into your account settings while I'm thinking of it, and you can change your password over here. And that is a good thing to do from time to time. You really shouldn't have one password forever. Unfortunately, that is um, something that I don't do right myself. Um, I'm definitely going to get in there and change that password soon. And then the last thing we're going to look at is just the Google search app. This is something you're probably familiar with, but in case you haven't been on it for a while, there's a lot that you can do with Google search. So I'm going to type in digital skills. It will put the ads at the top and it put, says right here at the beginning that it is an ad. And then after that, it will put the highest ranked ones. And it also has the suggested things. If one of these looks like it is a better question, you can click on that. It also has these categories up here at the top. So one thing I like to do sometimes is I like to go to news because if something has just happened recently, I don't want to see older things about a related subject. I'll go to news. And it brings in things that will actually tell you how long ago that post is. So this was within the last day. This is within the last week. So that is really useful. An image search is something that I like. Um, if you ever do social media, you can grab some images here. Also, um, if you have seen a website and you remember the picture at the beginning, you can see if you can find that picture again. If you do, you click on it, and if you click on it again, it'll take you to that website where the picture came from. Then there's videos and maps, and there's the three dot menu that usually means more options. You can sometimes shopping is useful. Um, if there's something that you're actually shopping for and you don't know where you want to buy it, you can click that, and it will tell you here where it's from. You can do some filters over here on the side if you want to do, say, a price filter. So that is Google. The I'm feeling lucky if you haven't seen that lately. They are changing it. So you can just keep hovering over it until it gets to something that you want. And then when you click it, it will take you to a surprise. So that's just kind of a fun thing you can do if you're ever a little bit bored. If you're feeling stuck, you can go there and just take a little trip. So, of course, you don't have to log into Google to use Google search. But um, if you do, you can save searches and you can set up search alerts. And we're going to have a class called Power Your Job Search where we're going to look at how to set up um, alerts. And that will be a job alert, but it will be the same way you set up alerts for other things. So that is a flying trip through how to set up a Google account. Sorry, that's what we need. So this is my work address. I, call, I check the email all the time. This is my Google address. So if you want to, say, try out Gmail, if you want, you can just send one to this address, and I'll uh, respond when I get it. And then there's my phone extension if you want to leave me a message on my phone. All right, that's all I have for right now. So thank you for joining, and we'll be putting some of these online. So keep watching YouTube and you can learn some more about using Google and other digital skills.